Hi folks, Astronomy Live here. I just discovered a new comet. It's my first comet discovery, and it was made using the Stereo Ahead spacecraft as seen here during its processing before flight. It's now in flight and on the opposite side of the sun from us, and it's able to see Earth in its HI-1 camera. Earth is right next to Mars in these images. It's just left of center as the brightest object in the image. Now, it was while processing the raw data for these images that I happened to notice a small moving object on the far left of the images, and I couldn't find an ID for it with any known comet or asteroid. It is very small and faint, so I'll run these images again and highlight it for you so that you can see it. It's right there in the center of the circle, moving down and to the right in the images. These images were processed from the raw FITS files available on the Stereo website. Though these were the images in which I discovered the comet, they are lower in angular resolution than the images that were ultimately used to measure its position and calculate its approximate orbit. The path of the comet was traced backwards, and it was found to have passed through the core two images taken on May 11th through the 13th. These images have a higher angular resolution than the discovery images, and so they were used to measure its position and calculate an approximate orbit. The comet is still very small and dim, even in these images, so I will highlight it once again and play these images back so that you can see it moving from the top center of the image down into the right. Now, although I'm the one who discovered this comet, it will not be named after me, and that's because of the rules that govern the naming of comets. When a comet is found using images from a spacecraft like Stereo, it's automatically named after that spacecraft, regardless of who found it in the images. But that's just fine by me. I still get credit for the discovery. Now we'll take a brief look at its approximate orbit using ORSA, and in this integration you can see its minimum orbit intersect distance labeled in blue. Now although it looks like it intersects Earth's orbit at two points, it's actually quite tilted to the ecliptic plane. And when you look at it in three dimensions, you can see that even at its closest point to Earth's orbit, it's still about a third of an astronomical unit away. Now that's not its minimum distance to Earth, that's its minimum distance to Earth's orbit. Its minimum distance to Earth on this particular orbit is even farther away. Here's the Minor Planet Center's webpage of my comet, P2016J3. That's the systematic designation of the comet based on when and in what order it was discovered. Finally, here's JPL's page showing the comet, and you can see the orbital uncertainty is quite large. And as a result, the condition code is a 9, the highest value. That indicates a highly uncertain orbit. But that's what you would expect for any newly discovered object, because time is an important factor. And we only have a couple days of data from the core 2 imager on stereo with which to determine the orbit. And that's just not enough time. Whether we're able to improve the determination of the orbit or not is going to depend on whether or not it can be recovered by ground-based observatories in the coming days. Even if it's not, it was great to be able to discover a comet of my own using the stereo images.